news articles say violent crime is falling, but you don't see any corrections in the news. But Blunt says it doesn't take a rise in the numbers to convince Americans that crime is up. They see it every time they walk into a Walgreens. Everything or virtually everything is behind plexiglass. Property crime must have increased dramatically or these stores wouldn't be engaged in all these very costly activities to try to stop crime. Not only that, but Lot says even the current revisions are probably low. People are tired of calling for help that never comes. And you're going to have some people who previously would have reported crimes to the police who are going to say, you know, it's just not worth it uh, for me to go and do that. I'm Steve Chordahl. President Biden delivered remarks from Berlin, Germany, alongside German Chancellor Olaf Scholz Friday morning. The president restated that the U.S. and Germany stand firmly with our Ukraine in their ongoing defense against Russia and are looking to increase support for the Eastern European country. Today, the Chancellor and I are going to discuss ongoing efforts to surge support to Ukraine's military, to shore up Ukraine's civilian energy infrastructure, which is under constant assault and bombardment from Russia. President Biden is acknowledging Germany as an important ally for the U.S. and praising them for standing up to Russian President Vladimir Putin. A lawsuit has been filed to try to remove the Florida abortion amendment from the November ballot. AFN's Chris Woodward has more. Former Florida Supreme Court Justice Ellen Lawson, now in private practice, filed the lawsuit on behalf of pro-life individuals in Florida. The plaintiffs claim the people that gathered signatures for a petition to get the abortion amendment on the ballot turned in fictitious, forged, illegally obtained, or otherwise invalid signatures. When removed from consideration, Plaintiffs believe that Amendment 4 failed to reach the constitutionally required number of signatures for the November ballot. In responding to all this on the Washington Watch program, John Stenberger of Florida-based Liberty Council Action said this is a very serious matter. There have apparently thousands and thousands of petitions in the citizens' petition gathering process by paid petition gatherers. And as you know, this is a group of mercenaries that travel around the country Wherever it pays the most per petition, they go all around the country. They don't really care about the issues, they just gather these petitions, and it was widespread fraud. Florida requires 60% approval for a ballot initiative to pass. Stenberger does not believe the pro-abortion side has the votes, but even if it did, Stenberger argues it could be struck down because of the serious nature of the way these petitions were gathered. I'm Chris Woodward. And that is American Family News on the Hour. I'm Chad Groen. America is at a crossroads. We're talking about November 5th. The consequences of this election are broader than even sometimes I grasp. You only have two options, to vote or not vote. AFA at Home takes a deep look. Pray for fair elections, that God's hand is over these elections. It all impacts you directly. Make your voice heard. Don't miss this special edition of AFA at Home on AFA Stream. Visit stream.afa.net to sign up today. Stream.afa.net. communication. Kathleen, it's great to have you here today. Thank you, Rob. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Well, I am too, because we've talked so much on this program about our hard wiring from the Lord and how that affects every facet of our lives, but certainly that includes our money management. And uh, I want to start with effective communication. I mean, that's a skill that we have to be aware of and learn to practice in various contexts, right? Oh my gosh, absolutely. There's so many just large communication skills and small communication skills that we 
are never taught. Yes. Um, and what ends up happening is most miscommunication isn't intentional. Mm. What happens is each temperament speaks its own language and we have skills that we have to learn to apply, like listening to understand instead of listening to reply, huh. showing curiosity and interest. My favorite, the power of the pause. Uh, it is extremely difficult for two particular temperaments to do the pause, but everybody needs that processing time. Yes. Everybody needs it. Well, we're going to get into temperaments in a moment because that may not be a word you're terribly familiar with. We tend to think personalities. We'll talk about what temperaments are and also how they relate to your money management. But I want you to share a bit about your book, I Said This, You Heard That. It really is more than a book. Julie and I, my wife and I went through it, and it was a game changer for us. Tell us a little bit about the format. The format is just as if you were spending six weeks with me in my office. Mm. It's going to give you foundation on the temperaments, the history, how you're wired, how people around you are wired, and even activities that I've done for over 30 years. So it's going to help you go through a six-week study. There's videos that go with it that are free because um, I would really like everybody to get a chance to go through it. And by the end of that six weeks, there's going to be a lot of aha moments going on. Yeah, there certainly was for yeah. us. Let's get into this idea of temperaments. Uh, most people would tell you that human interaction in general and communication in particular are affected by personalities. Mm -hmm. You focus on these temperaments. Mm -hmm. Why is that and what's the difference? Well, Hippocrates studied temperaments 600 years before Jesus walked the earth. Mm -hmm. And temperament is how people naturally respond to different situations. Uh, so temperament is hardwired. It's like your eye color, your fingerprint. Now they say you have a tongue print. It is hmm. unchangeable. Personality, on the other hand, is constantly evolving. It's birth order, um, religion, life experience. So temperament is not personality. Temperament is the core motivation of how God designed you to be. Yeah, and this is something that's still being used widely today in modern psychological studies, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Daily. There's yeah. so many assessments out there. A lot of them personality, but if you get the core of temperament, it's going to change every single ちょっとガス入れてくるから。
consumeraccess.org. We are grateful for support from Timothy Plan. Are you unsure if your investments align with your values? Well, for nearly three decades, the goal of the Timothy Plan has been to guide clients on a biblically responsible journey with its mutual funds and ETFs. More information is available at timothyplan.com. Investing includes risk, including possible loss of principal. Before investing, carefully consider funds, investment, objectives, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. Read carefully before investing. Mutual funds distributed by Timothy Partners LTD and ETFs distributed by Foresight Fund Services LLC. Great to have you with us today on Faith and Finance here on American Family Radio. I'm Rob West. With me today, communication temperament expert Kathleen Edelman. She's the author of the landmark book, I Said This, You Heard That, How Your Wiring Colors Your Communication. And Kathleen, before the break, we were talking about how important temperaments are to understanding how we communicate, how we relate and communicate with others. And all of this has a lot to do with how we see and interact with money. Talk about that. Oh, well, we have to understand that temperament, each temperament has their own basic motivation. And that motivation comes from each temperament's innate needs. And the innate needs are what separates me from all the other assessments out there. And so as we're communicating, we have to first understand that who do you communicate with the most, mm. right? Yes. Most people are going to say their spouse or their financial planner, maybe. Sure. Um, but it's actually yourself. So you have to understand that so that your marriage is strong or the parent-child relationship is strong, the boss-employee is strong. Effective communication is going to help in business negotiations. It's going to help clearly when you have a client. And so the four temperaments that we're talking about are sanguine, choleric, melancholic, and phlegmatic. Now, when you read the I Said That You Heard That book, I've matched them with colors. So sanguine's yellow, choleric's red, phlegmatic's green, and melancholic is blue. So each speaks their own language. The yellow speaks the language of people and fun. So you can imagine if you're talking about finances, this person is going to be a great saver if they know something fun is down the path. Yes. Right? They need a vision. They need a going. vision. Like if I save X amount of dollars, I'm going to Europe, you know, with all my friends. That's going to be so much fun. Um, the choleric, this is a visionary. Uh, so this person sets goals. So you just give them a number. Hmm. You say, you know, a million dollars. They'll hit a million dollars, yes. you know, and then they want the next goal right. and the next goal. Um, the melancholic, this would be me, uh, we speak the language of perfection and order. So this is a person whose innate needs though, and that's Rob why I said the innate needs are critical to understand, is yeah. safety. That's my, that's my first innate need. Yes. So I'm going to always have my finances set up in a way where I feel safe. Yes. Like I have a safety net. I know what's going to happen if I retire. I know what's going to happen if I get become ill or my children, anything. I'm yes. going to have a plan, yes. right? Well, and it strikes me that if I'm marrying a melancholic, mm -hmm. uh, let's say my wife is the melancholic. Right. I need to know that because we're going to handle money completely differently. She wants to know there's enough there that we're safe in the future. Exactly. And that's why what I love about what I have done for three decades is once you know it, you realize you apply it to every single part of your life. Mm -hmm. But let's not leave out those phlegmatic okay. greens. This is somebody I happen to be married to a forest green. And... Um, they they have this kind of um, wiring of it'll always work out. Yes. It will always work out. So they're probably going to be the most difficult to get on a budget. Okay. Or to, um, you know, have them see far into the future. But what we know about greens is they only do things they're interested in. So if you lock that up with, hey, um, I'm interested in retiring at 50, or I'm interested in taking my children skiing three times a year, you know, it's where it's different than the yellow, what's motivated by fun and people. Yes. That green is harmony and, and, and also people, but they want to have some kind of interest 
in it. If it's, they're not interested, not a penny is going to be saved. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, and this is why it's so key for you to understand your temperament. But then alongside that, Kathleen, there's other characteristics that you pull out in the book to help folks understand how they're wired. Share a few of those with us. Every single temperament has their own set of strengths and weaknesses. So I think God's very intentional with this because people will say, well, why don't, why don't we just have we you know strengths why yeah. do we even have weaknesses sure. like how what good is that well our god's a god of perfect timing and order and we know light because we know dark yes we know loud because we know quiet we know good because we know evil and you're gonna know your strengths because you're gonna learn to manage your weaknesses mm. you have to know your weaknesses in order to live out of the strengths God's given you. And when we do that, when we, when we apply, like one of the activities, Rob, in the book is, I have a tendency to, but I'm going to choose. Ah. So I have a tendency to be moody. Sure. But what does the circumstance require of me? Does it require logic, compassion? I have a whole list of strengths. And when I'm in my strengths, that's where my calling and purpose is. Mm -hmm. That's where I can truly honor God. When I'm in my weaknesses, that's flesh and ego. Yes. That's me calling the shots. You know, so we have the strengths and weaknesses. Then we have the innate needs. Like I said, each temperament has their own set of innate needs. They are like food and water. They're non-negotiable. Yep. You've been filling them since you were born, right? Those are actually your two first cheat sheets when you're learning the languages of the other temperaments. Okay. Because you speak out of your temperament. I speak out of mine. Yes. We're not, that's where I said earlier, most miscommunication isn't intentional. It's just we don't understand each other, That's right. right? So we have to learn to do what I call paradigm shifting. I have to take off my blue lens. And what is your dominant temperament? I'm green. And put on green yeah. in order to speak so that you can hear me. And then I walk away and you're like, gosh, there's something about that Kathleen. I really like her, right? <laughs> you know? well, uh, and that's what you talk about so much in the book that I love. And that is putting this into practice so that our communication helps to build people up instead of tearing them down, which yeah. we do so often without perhaps even knowing it. Exactly. I love that is my family Bible verse. That's what my whole company is um, built on is Ephesians 4.29. And I love you. It's a perfect communication outline if you break it down into four do not let any of the whole smarts come out of your mouth yes. only what builds others up according to their needs and benefit all who listen so paul's putting down a challenge right in the very first sentence telling us that do not let that's our choice the words you use you know are the words you choose that's right and unwholesome doesn't mean curse words right. <laughs> it means anything that is unhealthy or unhelpful so right there, if we just change that, I encourage people to insert their name. So I say, Kathleen, no unwholesome words come out of your mouth. Only what builds Brad up according to his needs and benefit Bryce and Avery. And you can insert your boss, you can insert your coach, you can insert anything. And then it keeps you on track that you're responsible to build them up, not tear them down. Yeah, you know? and what's the win in that? What have you seen come out of living life that way? I think you, first of all, you cannot give what you don't have. So if you're not giving those kind words to yourself, you're not giving them out. And what you put out, you will get back. God says that, right? Wow. That is so powerful. Well, Kathleen, we've, of course, just scratched the surface in this. So we're going to have to have you back and dig deeper into this. But I'm so grateful for your time and your work in this. It has so much to do with our money management and our relationships and being God honoring and building others up, which I know is your ultimate goal. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. All right. That's Kathleen Edelman, folks. I can't encourage you enough to pick up a copy of I Said This, You Heard That, How Your Wiring Color your communication you can buy it wherever you buy books all right a quick break and back with your questions after this the number 800-525-7000 those lines are open 24 7 800-525-7000 오도산 어 수협이 돌았다 수협이 베르노 선생이 갔다 그랬죠 아 싫어가 못 갔다요 어 아이사도 있다 너 
大丈夫大丈夫だった大丈夫
might impact things like financial aid el eligibility, loan, uh, student loan payments, or even Medicare premiums. Remember, you, you've got that bump up in Medicare premium depending upon your income level. The key here is to understand your tax situation over the 10-year period and develop a withdrawal strategy that minimizes your tax burden while still complying with the IRS rules. So naturally, you want to work with a financial planner uh, or CPA or both as you're working through this to make sure that you do this in a way that's effective but stay in compliance with the IRS rules and regs. We certainly don't want penalties and interest. So hopefully that's helpful to you. All right, let's dive in today. We're going to begin in Pennsylvania. Esther will be our first caller. Go ahead. Hi, Rob. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, Reporting about my daughter-in-law, who is a widow, and um, from my son, uh, she had two children who were 18 and 20, and um, recently, well, uh, over a year ago, she was diagnosed with colon cancer, and she's been dealing with treatment and um, uh, just the uh, problems with the colon cancer, um, and then. About six months ago, she was notified by the Social Security Department that uh, she owes $40,000 because they overpaid her. Okay. She went to a lawyer and didn't get any help, and so I'm, that's why I'm calling. Yeah, yeah, well, I am so sorry to hear about it. She's She's been through it, and obviously this continues. These are, these are difficult uh, this is a difficult season, clearly, and I'm, I'm delighted you're walking alongside her in this. Um, boy, and this can be a real hardship. Uh, it is possible, uh, Esther, to obtain a waiver from a Social Security payback order under certain circumstances, and these would seem to apply here. Uh, first, you can demonstrate the overpayment wasn't your fault and you couldn't have reasonably known about it. Um, second would be if you can show that repaying the money would cause a significant financial hardship and then more or less a formality, but you must still meet the eligibility requirements for receiving the benefits. So, you know, generally I would recommend, and I know you said you did this and it didn't work out, but generally I'd recommend getting with an attorney experienced in handling Social Security issues. So somebody who really has an expertise in this area would be the, the next step. Perhaps you reach out to a certified kingdom advisor there in Pennsylvania and see if, if they could provide a referral to somebody who's a little bit more specifically aware of, of these types of issues so that you're not having to find somebody to get up to speed, but somebody who just says, oh yeah, I mean, I've been down that road, I know the process, here's how we're going to handle it. That's really who you're looking for. Um, so I, I would go back down that road, but perhaps reach out to a CKA, which you would do on our website, uh, faithfi.com. Just click find a professional and then just ask for a referral. You may need to call two or three to find one that really feels like they can get you connected to somebody who can help you navigate this. But the good news is there should be a path forward if, if again, she can comply with some of these um, you know, circumstances uh, to obtain that waiver and, and see if we can get her into a place where she doesn't have to pay this back. Well, that sounds like good, good news that there is something that can be done. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, you just need to find so the, the right professional to navigate this with you. Absolutely, Esther. Please keep us posted and we'll certainly ask the faith and finance community to be praying for you and more specifically uh, your daughter-in-law she navigates this. But um, thanks for being on the program today. Lord bless you. Uh, let's go to Georgia. Priscilla, you're next, uh, you're next on the program. Go ahead. Thank you for taking the call. Um, I'm 92 ago, and I have three grown children. Uh, two are very economical. They handle money well. The third, uh, he does not do well at all. Uh, so I was going to uh, put a trust uh, in his name for his third of it. Each will have an equal amount. Uh, the girls will have theirs all at once and he'll have his in a trust. Is that the appropriate way to do it? Yes, ma'am. That would be the way that you control the distribution of the funds beyond your death. If you had a simple will at your death, it would all be paid out at one time as the estate was settled by the executor through the probate court. With a trust, you do have more control. So you can establish not only who gets what portion, but based on a series of triggering events, reaching a certain age, being distributed over time, uh, you know, any, any criteria you set. 
And so that would be the way to do it. Have you already put that to revocable trust in place? Um, no, no, okay. I haven't. That's yeah, so, so that's the next step. But yes, you're on the right track here um, in, in terms of what you're thinking, and that would be the way to do it. It's also going to allow it to pass outside of probate, which is going to save cost and time. Uh, I've got to hit a break, but stay on the line. I'd like to talk to you a bit more off the air. We'll be right back. We are grateful to Chessman Wealth Strategies for their support of faith and finance. Their mission is to help clients make smart choices with their money so they can worry less, enjoy life, and ultimately become good stewards of the resources God has entrusted to them. Chessmanwealth.com. That's Chessmanwealth.com. The phone number is 214-572-2120. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. This is Frank Gaffney, host of Securing America, a program dedicated to protecting the country we love against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to the glory of God and His kingdom. Each weeknight at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, we provide insights and recommendations about the most important challenges facing our nation from our most thoughtful experts and patriots. Join me to learn how you can help in Securing America right here at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Faith and Finance is grateful for support from Sound Mind Investing. If you have money in an investment account, you know sometimes the stock market can seem like a roller coaster. But it's possible to enjoy both profit and peace of mind as a do-it-yourself investor, no matter what's happening in the market. A short video webinar about that is available at soundmindinvesting.org. Financial wisdom for living well. Soundmindinvesting.org. God has entrusted his finances to you, and we at FaithFi have designed our FaithFi app to help you live, give, owe, and grow with that perspective. Our FaithFi app is the leading biblically-based finance app. You can manage your money, get top biblical financial resources, and interact with a community of like-minded believers, where you can ask questions, get answers, and share what you're learning. Go to faithfi.com and click the word app to get started. The American Family Association's mission is to inform, equip, and activate individuals to strengthen the moral foundations of our culture. We also support the church. Our goal is to be a leading organization in biblical worldview training for cultural transformation. We believe true morality flows from biblical principles and directs people to the manner in which God intends them to live. Thank you for standing with the American Family Association as we seek to stop the erosion of godly values. Paying too much for health insurance? Frustrated by high deductibles and increasing premiums? There's a better way. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is a Christian community delivering a faith-based solution to the high cost of healthcare. Take control over your healthcare costs with a program from CHM that could save you up to 40%. Learn more and enroll today at chministries.org slash faithby. That's chministries.org slash faithby. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. Thanks for joining us today. I had a delightful conversation off the air with Priscilla. You know, the next step is to decide beyond the trust, how do you communicate with your kids and what that looks like, especially when there's a hard conversation involved. We're going to send her a copy of Ron Blue's book, Splitting Airs, which I think is the best book to help you navigate, not the, the tools and techniques of estate planning, but really the why and the communication behind it, those decisions that you need to make through the lens of biblical wisdom. You know, one of the principles Ron shares is uh, around do your giving while you're living so you're knowing where it's going. And it's this idea that let's not just automatically assume we'll give everything away at death. What if we set a finish line now and started accelerating our giving today? He also says, and some people struggle with this, it just seems like it kind of goes against everything we believe, but he says, if you love your children equally, you will treat them uniquely. And I think that's what Priscilla's getting at. Listen, based on his spiritual and financial maturity, I think I need to approach his inheritance differently. And as the steward, I think you need to make that call with prayerful consideration and, uh, you know, really thoughtful uh, approaches. 
Uh, but Ron really tackles these hard issues around the why of estate planning and, and wealth transfer, but also uh, the communication side, which is so key. Uh, if you'd like to check it out, you can get it wherever you buy books. Again, it's called Splitting Heirs, and it's my favorite resource on this topic. All right, let's continue to take your calls today. By the way, we've got two lines open, 800-525-7000. Uh, let's go to Colorado. Kimmy, you're next up. Go ahead. Um, yes, I recently um, found out that I have a pension, and I would like to know if um, I could invest it somewhere. Yes. Uh, is this from a previous employer, Kimmy? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah. So typically, what folks will do with a pension is roll it out to an IRA which stands for Individual Retirement Account. Uh, so a pension is a pre-tax investment account that was funded probably by your employer, uh, and it's in a pre-tax environment. An IRA is pre-tax as well, meaning you don't pay the tax on it until you take a withdrawal. And so when you roll the pension over to the IRA, that does not create a taxable event because you're going from pre-tax account to pre-tax account. Uh, now, once you get it in the IRA, and this is the reason why you'd want to do that, is you have basically unlimited options in terms of how you would invest the money or how somebody could invest it on your behalf. And that way, if you don't need the money now, and ideally you don't, we could just let it grow, then it could be invested in a way that's consistent with your age and goals and objectives and risk tolerance, let it grow over time. And then if you need to convert it to an income stream down the road to supplement other income that you have, you can do that. And then you just pay tax on the money as you withdraw it. There's no taxes being paid you know, as it grows, there's no capital gains or anything like that on the investments. Um, so then the only other decision would be whether or not you want to try to make those investment decisions yourself, or you want to delegate that to someone or something, you know, an organization. What are your thoughts on that? Um, yes, I'll probably to um, someone help, helping yeah. out or go, go, very good. So what I would recommend is that you connect with a certified kingdom advisor in your area. Uh, you can go to our website at faithfi.com, faithfi.com. Just click find a professional and a CK could help you get that rolled over, get it invested. Um, if you wanted kind of a middle of the road option where you're still doing it, but you're getting some help, soundmindinvesting.org is a great resource. They're an underwriter of this program. They go all the way back to Larry Burkett and they're believers, but what they would provide is recommendations on which investments you would pick, but um, you would make the, the buying and selling decisions uh, ultimately, but with their guidance that they would provide through their website and, and newsletter. So you could do either option, I think would be good. Um, if you want a faith-based approach, that's where a CKA would come in. They could ensure that the, uh, the mutual funds that they're using um, you know, are screened for your values. Um, but either of those would be good options, faithfi.com to find a CKA or soundmindinvesting.org. Okay, that sounds, that sounds good then. All right. Um, I, guess, I guess one last question real, real quick. Is sure. it safer then to put it into uh, IRA than keeping it in a pension fund? There's really no difference in the safety um, in that, I mean, both have risks. A pension comes, there's a risk if the company were to uh, to go bankrupt, but there's, there's protection through federal oversight uh, because it's a retirement account. The ERISA laws would protect it. Uh, with an IRA, it, it'd be with a brokerage firm, but there's protection through what's called SIPC um, so that it would be if the brokerage firm went under, went bankrupt, failed, um, the government would step in. They don't protect you against losses on the investments, but they would protect the account against a failure of the institution that it, that's holding the money on your behalf. So in either case, you've got protections. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. The safety Thank is you the that. same. It's really a matter of once you roll it to the IRA, you know, what investments are we going to pick? And anytime we're using investments, there's the risk of loss. And so you just have to know that we're taking a long-term perspective and whoever is making those investment decisions for you is doing that with your age and goals and objectives in mind. But there is risk there and you just need to, you need to know that going in. Okay. Okay, well, um, that's uh, very important.
forward to them um, going to go online and look for, um, for the Run Kingdom advisor. Excellent. Thank you, Kimmy. Thanks for your call today. Lord bless you. Let's go out to Texas. Hi, Luke. How can I help? Yes, sir. Good morning. Hi there. Hey, <sighs> hey uh, I was working for a company. Uh, I no longer work for them, but I thought it was a health savings account where you could put money in uh, to have, like, when you need uh, for medical expenses. Yeah. Okay, so currently I need to get the dental work done, and that company no longer exists. So I don't know if they went bankrupt or what, but I was trying to find out where that money would be. But the, I thought if I put money in there in the savings account, and then it, it's fine. You know?